Welcome to part three of the video series discussing NEO's upcoming solid state battery technology. In this video, we will focus in on the chemistry details that William Lee discussed at NEO Day and determine if Tesla should be concerned. I'm Jonathan and welcome to Cleaner Watt. As we mentioned in the past video, comments made by the CEO of NEO, William Lee, at the recent NEO day about their solid state battery tech give us some clues about the chemistry of their batteries. Once again, here are those comments, and specifically we're going to focus in on the ones talking about the chemistry of their batteries. We adopt the most advanced production ready solid state battery tech to improve the energy density by 50% through material and process innovations. The 150 kilowatt hour battery boasts an ultra high energy density of 360 watt hours per kilogram. The in situ solidification and hybrid electrolyte secure the cell safety. The inorganic pre-lithiation and silicon carbon composite anode together with a nano coating and nickel ultra rich cathode can significantly boost the energy density while achieving a good battery life and a higher charging efficiency. So let's break down these comments about the chemistry of their solid state batteries, starting with the first thing that he talked about, talking about the hybrid electrolytes. These two terms that William Lee mentioned, in situ solidification and the hybrid electrolyte are two terms that we need to understand in order to figure out what kind of battery they're offering. In situ solidification is really just a fancy word for stabilized in place and it's specifically referring to the hybrid electrolyte that is mentioned as well and a hybrid electrolyte is a semi-solid electrolyte not an all solid state battery electrolyte. They most likely use a flexible polymer based electrolyte for this hybrid battery. This Green Car Congress article talks about one type of hybrid polymer glass electrolyte for solid state batteries and it says, quote, it can readily deform to maintain contact with the electrodes as the battery is cycled. So although we don't have all the exact details about the exact hybrid electrolyte that NEO is going to be using, we do know that it's going to be some kind of flexible electrolyte that's going to be somewhere between a solid and a liquid. Now the question is why a hybrid battery? Why not just go all solid state? Why have something in between a hybrid battery? The answer to this question is it comes down to the balance of performance and safety. Solid state electrolytes are non-flammable and extremely safe. However, they often suffer from poor performance characteristics and short cycle life. So this is where the hybrid battery comes in. It uses some of the characteristics of a solid state battery and it uses some of the characteristics of a traditional liquid based battery and it falls somewhere in the middle there where it has good safety, not quite as good as an all solid state battery, but it still offers pretty decent life and pretty good performance. According to this article from PV Magazine quote, Hybrid quasi-solid state electrolytes comprising both liquid and solid components have emerged as a practical compromise to obtain safer batteries while maintaining good performance. The next term that we want to discuss from William Lee's comments revolve around pre-lithiation or inorganic pre-lithiation. Pre-lithiation is a pretty common practice with battery manufacturing to make up for the first charge cycle lithium losses with a new battery cell. According to this review from MDPI, quote, in a standard lithium ion cell setup, the active lithium content is stored within the positive electrode, that's the cathode, prior to battery cell operation. During the first charge of the cell, which is the formation cycle, a certain amount of active lithium is typically lost mostly by SEI, which stands for solid electrolyte interface formation at the negative electrode, which is the anode. So what this article is basically describing is the first cycle that you put a lithium ion battery through, you lose some of the lithium that is in the battery, which leads to a lower energy density of the battery, unless you compensate for that and do some kind of coating of lithium on the anode before you actually charge the battery. Tesla has somewhat recently filed a patent for a pre-lithiation process, so I am pretty certain that the 4680 cells will benefit from this. 
The next thing that William Lee talked about was a silicon carbon composite anode. Once again, a silicon carbon composite anode is not uncommon, and pretty much every battery company is trying to increase the amount of silicon in the anode because that increases the energy density and charging speed capabilities of the batteries. This is due to the fact that, as Tesla mentioned at Battery Day with this slide, silicon stores nine times more lithium than does graphite. However, the reason that NEO and other battery companies are not using 100% silicon anodes, but rather really just a small amount of silicon in the anode, is because 100% silicon anodes don't last very long because of volume expansion. This is something that Elon Musk talked about at Battery Day. The solution is a silicon carbon composite anode like Tesla talked about at Battery Day with a small amount of silicon and a large amount of carbon, usually in the form of graphite. The next comments that William Lee made talked about the cathode of the batteries. He specifically mentioned nano coating and nickel ultra rich cathodes. Specifically when he mentioned nano coating in this context of the cathode, I believe he's talking about using nanoparticles to overcome the need for cobalt rich cathodes. The reason why most battery companies are trying to reduce or eliminate cobalt in their batteries is because cobalt is a very expensive metal and it also has some social problems that exist with human rights issues. However, as this article points out, quote, cobalt is key for boosting energy density and battery life because it keeps the layered structure stable as lithium ions get reversibly stuffed into and extracted from the cathode during battery operation. So cobalt is very important in batteries. However, new nano coatings help overcome the problems with taking away cobalt from the battery. This article from plugboats.com talks about this, quote, one of the current methods for addressing some cathode deficiencies is coating the cathode materials. Among other things, coating can help improve the flow of ions in and out of the cathode and means metals like nickel can replace some of the cobalt. So using these nano coatings allows for a nickel ultra rich cathode that William Lee talked about. Tesla is also working to eliminate cobalt from their batteries, so they are most likely using a comparable technology to help them achieve this goal. Now the rest of William Lee's comments about their batteries were a lot more vague, but I believe we have enough information to at least make some basic assumptions. When it comes to the cycle life of their batteries, he said they will have good battery life. However, one of the reasons why solid state batteries have not yet been commercially viable comes down to poor cycle life. Even companies like QuantumScape that have a somewhat breakthrough solid state battery, which they have confirmed is also a hybrid semi-solid state battery, can only be cycled for somewhere around 800 cycles or so. So if one of the leaders in the industry, QuantumScape, has seen around 800 cycles for their hybrid semi-solid state batteries, I have no doubt that NEO is probably in that same ballpark. Now, 800 charging cycles isn't terrible and should still be good for over 200,000 miles for a 300 mile range EV, for instance. But these hybrid solid state batteries likely won't last as long as Tesla's upcoming 4680 battery cells. When it comes to Tesla's even old battery tech, the 2170 cells, those batteries, according to Elon Musk, are good for around 1500 cycles. Also, when it comes to charging speed, William Lee was also very vague, and he just mentioned higher charging efficiency. This is a pretty vague reference that could mean higher charging speed, but why didn't he just say higher charging speed? I'm not really sure. But based on what we know about other hybrid batteries, I do expect that NEO's hybrid solid state battery will charge very quickly. But I do believe, based on the research that I've done, that Tesla's 4680 batteries will charge much faster than current battery tech, and I have no doubt they'll be somewhat in the ballpark of even this hybrid solid-state battery from NEO. When it comes to the production and time to market for NEO's batteries, he mentioned at the very end, talking about the batteries, that they would start deliveries sometime in Q4 of 2022. He also mentioned at the beginning of that statement that they are using production ready solid state battery tech. But the end of 2022 is more than a year and a half away. And by that time, Tesla's batteries, the 4680 batteries will be in mass production.
At Battery Day, Tesla laid out their plan to have terawatt hour scale gigafactories. And in 2022, they hope to produce 100 gigawatt hours of batteries. And by 2030, they hope to be producing three terawatt hours of batteries per year. I do feel pretty good about the prospects of NEO's hybrid solid state batteries and the launch timeline they've given appears possible. However, it'll still likely take several years before we see any large volumes of these batteries being manufactured. And that leads us to one of the last comparisons and that comes down to battery costs, which is really one of the most important aspects of battery manufacturing. NEO has not revealed any pricing details, but I don't foresee their pricing being any less expensive than the current battery tech based on what we know about similar technologies. Tesla, on the other hand, has laid out their plan to decrease battery cost by 56% with their new 4680 battery cells. The last thing that I want to talk about in this video and cover just briefly is the potential manufacturer for NEO's solid state battery. Initially in my research, I thought it might be CATL, but as I dove into the company and where they were with their solid state battery technology, it didn't appear like they were anywhere close when it comes to producing by 2022. Another company came up in my research by the name of Prologium. And according to this Inside EVs article, Prologium and NEO joined forces on solid state batteries for EVs. However, as I dove into the Prologium presentations and their technology, the energy density numbers they were talking about, their timelines, and also the electrolytes they're using didn't seem to match up with what was revealed at NEO Day. That led me to this Inside EVs article talking about a new company that NEO may be using for their solid state batteries. This article pointed to a company called Solid State Lion that was being reported by Chinese media. And if you go to the website, the full name is We Lion New Energy Technology Co. Limited. However, as I browse through the current site, it seems like it has been stripped of current information and had outdated information from 2017 or so. So I pulled up an archived version of the website from archive.org and I found some clues that seem to make sense that this is the battery supplier. On one of the pages, they reference making hybrid solid liquid electrolyte batteries. On another page, they talked about in situ solid state technology. And on that same page, it talked about atomic bonding technology, which I believe refers to the nano coatings that we talked about earlier. According to this website, quote, Beijing We Lion New Energy Technology Co. Limited is a high tech enterprise which focus on the next generation of solid state lithium ion battery research and development and production. It is also one of the few battery companies with the core patent and technology of solid state battery in China. The company focuses on high energy density, high security, high power and wide temperature range, adaptive solid liquid mixed battery and all solid state lithium battery products. And according to a Chinese news website, this company We Lion has two production bases in China. So in conclusion, NEO does have an exciting future and I'm happy to see them innovating with new battery tech. However, Tesla's 4680 batteries are today's game-changing technology that will remain competitive with even new solid state battery tech. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button because it helps other people find the video as well. I also want to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.